All right, welcome back everyone. I hope you're enjoying the security challenge. Now, uh, uh, this lecture or this session is about learning identification and authentication. This is going to be very, very important because this is the first lecture of this entire section on identity and access management. All right, so before we go ahead, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. This will boost me to more, more, more and more such videos. <laughs> All right, um, so let's begin with it. Uh, what we are actually first understand is uh, what exactly the, what are the resources? What are the enterprise resources that we have? Okay, so if you look at it closely, uh, you know, uh, our organization have got a lot of resources from desktop to mobile devices to the IoT devices. Uh, there are routers, switches, firewalls, uh, then there are a lot of uh, you know uh, other other uh, assets as well which could be in the data center which could be server databases uh, load balancers proxy devices many many stuff right now we can't really allow anyone to access the enterprise resources by you know at any moment of a time there has to be some method we need a kind of uh, identification method to verify if it's a valid user or not okay and we need a kind of authentication method after the user has been identified after we know okay this is the valid user we also need to verify okay he, if he is the right user or not it's a bit confusing but i'll tell you why how exactly it works well in the first step uh, when we talk about the identification we we talking about verifying the user uh, in in the enterprise database right so we in the in the identification phase we are just verifying okay if it's john right so we just try to verify if the john exists or not that's it but in the case of authentication phase we try to verify john with its credentials you know with its credentials maybe in in our case it could be a password so if that verified then it becomes uh, the john becomes an authenticated user at that moment of a time all right so it might happen that john might have forgot the password so at that p that moment of a time he is not an authenticated user right or maybe somebody else can impersonate uh, his identity and try to log in at log in at John right so in that case it might throw an error finally once the John entered the right credentials he will be having certain privileges right but uh, you know in order to in order to get uh, access to other resources the application or the system verifies if he is authorized user or not right so that comes under the authorization methods or authorization policy you could say right okay so now let's understand um, a second okay now let's understand uh, how exactly this route lo look like okay so uh, managing identification is all about managing identities okay identities could be username user information but these are not just limited to the user full name or user first name or last name right or maybe the email address it could be many things it could be username it could be name email addresses telephone number physical address department maybe his uh, you know direct manager details maybe it's blood group anything anything in the organization can be uh, treated as the identity right for that specific user usually uh, in the 90 percent more than i think more than 95 percent of organization managed through active directory through windows active directory so once we go once I, i'll show you how exactly this works so in the active directory itself we can see how the identities are managed okay so i'll practically show you that so if you try to take a real world example how that would really works so if you see a corporate world you know a person comes in with its id card i'm not really that good with the diagram so try to manage with the id card at the door itself or maybe in the office area itself every user from the director to the employee everyone have to authenticate himself or herself right 
So in that case, the ID card, the user put the ID card on the scanner. And on the back end, scanner basically talked to a database. Now this is a scanner. And scanner is having a database in the behind, which basically maintain an entry, a table of multiple users. So that would be a John. Okay, then will be Alice. Th there could be somebody else, maybe Bob. Maybe uh, Rahul. Okay, so there will be multiple users. It initially, the user will be verified if he is the identified user or not. And after that, based on the card, uh, magnetic strip or the code that has been stored in the card, user will be authenticated. And then the door opens and he can get access to it. But you see, even if the user enter in the office, there are multiple department, right? There are, There is a server room, Okay, there is a server room, then there could be an, you know, other sensitive area uh, area as well. There could be uh, IDC, there could be uh, HR team, uh, there can be a um, business team, right? Now a person, uh, person who belong to the business or who belongs to HR team shouldn't be getting an access to the uh, server room or the IDC, right? But the person who is involved into the IT, who is the IT manager or IT admin, should get the access to the server room or IDC, but shouldn't get access to the business team. Now that's that's where the authentic authorization, sorry, the authorization comes into the picture, okay? But uh, at the time of entering in the office, the authentication come into the picture. Okay. Will any which way go in much more detail to understand how exactly it would work. Uh, but for now, I think you got the idea about the identification and authentication. All right. So we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.